In Hezekiah's first year as the king of the southern kingdom, he opens the doors to the temple and he cleanses that temple completely. He removes the altar that his father had built and placed in the temple, the one that he had seen back in Damascus and had his priests replicate for the temple. He cleans that temple from top to bottom and he brings back in the bronze altar and the candlesticks and the utensils and all the other furniture that his father had had removed. The process takes seven days from Nisan the 8th to Nisan the 16th. And on the 16th day of the month, they consecrate that temple with the sacrifice of 70 bulls, 100 rams, 200 lambs for the burnt offering, and then they offer another 600 bulls and 3,000 sheep. There aren't enough priests to skin all the offerings, so some of the Levites help out while the other Levites play music on the harps and on the horns. Then Hezekiah sends out a message inviting all of Israel and all of Judah, that's all of the northern kingdom and all of the southern kingdom, to join him in celebrating the Passover. Hezekiah has decided to start the Passover again. Now the Passover was supposed to have occurred back on Nisan the 14th, but that was when the temple was being cleansed and consecrated. So for this one time, Hezekiah takes a chance and he declares that the Passover will occur this year on the next month, the second month of the year, on the 14th of that month. The proclamation goes out from Beersheba to Dan. And here's what the proclamation says. O sons of Israel, return to the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, that he may return to those of you who escaped and are left from the hand of the king of Assyria. Do not be like your fathers and your brothers, who were unfaithful to the Lord God of their fathers, so that he made them a horror, as you see. Now do not stiffen your neck like your fathers, but yield to the Lord and enter his sanctuary, which he has consecrated forever, and serve the Lord your God, that his burning anger may turn away from you. For if you return to the Lord, your brothers and your sons will find compassion before those who led them captive and will return to this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and compassionate and will not turn his face away from you if you return to him. Now the Lord is pleased with Hezekiah and the people come and they celebrate the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread beginning on the 14th of the second month. Hezekiah personally contributes 1,000 bulls and 7,000 sheep, and the princesses also contribute 1,000 bulls and 10,000 sheep. So there is a great joy in Jerusalem, because there was nothing like this in Jerusalem since the days of Solomon and the original dedication of the temple. Then the Levitical priests blessed the people and their voices are heard, and their prayers are heard in the holy dwelling place that's in heaven. Now when all this is finished, all Israel who are present go out to the cities of Judah, and they break down the pillars in pieces, cutting down the ashram, and pulling down all the high places, and all the altars throughout all of Judah, and all of Benjamin, as well as going up into what was the northern kingdom, and bringing down all of the high places and idols of Ephraim and Manasseh, until they have destroyed them all. Then all of the sons of Israel return to their cities and their homes, all those who were left behind. After the Passover, Hezekiah reestablishes the priestly order of service in the temple that was designed by King David originally. The morning and the evening offerings are restarted as well as the offerings for the Sabbath, the new moons, the fixed festivals that are dedicated by the Lord and recorded in the Law of Moses. The sons of the northern kingdom of Israel provide in abundance the first fruits of grain, new wine, oil, honey, and of all the produce of the field, and they bring in abundantly the tithe of all, and the tithe of sacred gifts which they consecrate to the Lord their God, and they place them in heaps. And in the third month they begin to make these heaps there in Jerusalem, and they finish them by the seventh month. When Hezekiah and the rulers see the heaps, they bless the Lord and his people Israel. Now Azariah, the chief priest of the house of Zadok, says to Hezekiah the king, 
Since these contributions began to be brought into the house of the Lord, we have had enough to eat with plenty left over, for the Lord has blessed his people, and this great quantity is left over. Hezekiah then has a genealogical enrollment made, including all the little children, their wives, their sons, and their daughters, for the whole assembly, for they consecrated themselves faithfully in holiness. Thus Hezekiah does what is good and right and true before the Lord his God, in every work which he began in the service of the house of God in the law and in the commandment, seeking his God, he does it with all of his heart, and he prospers. Two years later, Isaiah has a child with his wife, the prophetess, and they name the boy Maurice Shelah Asbeth. That name means, Before the son can say father and mother, a ram and Israel will be carried away to Assyria. With the birth of Isaiah's son, the Lord also promises that Emmanuel will come, meaning God with us, to protect his people, for he is the Lord of hosts, and a stone to strike, and a stone of stumbling. In 724 B.C., the same year that Isaiah's child is born, the final warnings to the northern kingdom begin to flow. But the northern kingdom fails to heed these warnings from the prophets and turn from their wicked, idolatrous ways to the light of Hezekiah's call to return to the Lord. The false prophets of the northern kingdom are making up lies, and the seers are dreaming up false images, but none of them come from God. The prophets foretell every aspect of the takeover. Now Micah has nothing to worry about, for his prophecies have come through his teacher, the Holy Spirit. And even though the Lord is about to remove the northern kingdom from the land, one day, in the last days, the Lord will reign from the mountain of the house of the Lord. Sadly, when attacked by the Assyrians, the northern kingdom is so desperate that they become cannibals of their own children, eating them just to survive. Had the people stayed true to the Lord, this calamity would never have come upon them. But they have forsaken the Lord during the days of Solomon and all the days of the divided kingdom, which began with Jeroboam the first. Moab is also wailing because they are struggling and in fear of being ruined and carried off by the king of Assyria. The king of the northern kingdom reaches out to Moab, allowing those of Moab who are displaced to live in the northern kingdom. But the prophecy is that within three years, Moab will be degraded and the remnant will be few. In 723 B.C., Isaiah proclaims a prophecy. He tells the people of the northern kingdom that within a year and a few days that all of its cities and its palaces will be abandoned and the people who survive will live in a peaceful place. As 722 B.C. comes around, Isaiah sings a song of the beloved, a song of the fertile, the tower vat, and the vineyards, but the grapes are so bad that the Lord will remove all the hedges and the walls and destroy Israel and Judah because they do not seek the Lord. In this song, Isaiah says that both the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom will be sent into exile because both of them called good evil and evil good. Just a short time later in 722 B.C., Isaiah says, Woe to those who worship idols and plunder the widows and orphans. Woe to Assyria who will be the Lord's rod. He is sending Assyria to carry into exile and to punish, not to totally destroy. The southern kingdom is... Not to fear Assyria, Isaiah says, for the Lord will protect Judah from Assyria. A few days later, in 722 B.C., Isaiah says to the people, Do not fear, for he, the Lord, will be with you. He loves Israel. And one day he will gather you all back from the ends of the earth. For the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, is your Savior, and there is no other Savior. The Lord says, I am God. But Israel and Jacob have not brought worship to the Lord God. They've brought sin. 
so they will have to go into exile. A little later in 722 B.C., Isaiah says this to the tribes of the north, The righteous man is taken from the evil. I will not relent because you have loved like a harlot with other kings. You have lied and you did not remember me. Let your collection of idols rescue you. The high holy one dwells on high and he has seen their ways, but he will heal them one day. But for now, there is no peace for the wicked. It is just about time for Amos's words to come true. The words that he said, Hear this word which the Lord has spoken against you, sons of Israel, against the entire family which he brought up from the land of Egypt. You only have I chosen among all the families of the earth. Therefore I will punish you for all of your iniquities. Amos was sent by the Lord to warn Israel, and particularly its capital city of Samaria, that he would bring calamity upon the entire northern kingdom if they did not repent. And Amos said that over 50 years before. Here's how he said it. Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret counsel to his servants, the prophets. A lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken. An enemy, even one surrounding the land, will pull down your strength from you and your citadels will be looted. Just as the shepherd snatches from the lion's mouth a couple of legs and a piece of an ear, so will the sons of Israel dwelling in Samaria be snatched away with the corner of a bed and the cover of a couch. Amos' words are about to be fulfilled. These words... Therefore, thus I will do to you, O Israel, because I will do this to you. Prepare to meet your God, O Israel. For behold, he who forms mountains and creates the winds and declares a man what are his thoughts, he who makes dawn into darkness and treads the high places of the earth, the Lord God of hosts is his name. Prepare to meet your God, O Israel. Hoshea, the king of the north, has not been honest with Shalmaneser, the king of Assyria. In Hosea's sixth year as the king and Hezekiah's fourth year, Shalmaneser begins to attack the rest of the northern kingdom, and Hoshea tries to enlist the king of Egypt for help, but the Assyrian king stops that by putting the Egyptian king in prison. Finally, in Hoshea's ninth year, at dawn one morning in the spring of 722 B.C., Shalmaneser captures King Hoshea, and by noon he captures the entire city of Samaria. The smoke and the dust from the battle is so great that it blocks the sunshine at noon, causing it to seem like it is the middle of the night. King Hoshea is carried off and put in prison in Assyria. Fifty-six years earlier, the Lord had prepared the dirge, the lament for the northern kingdom, to be sung when the fall and the exile occurred. It is time for that dirge and that song to be sung in history. She has fallen. She will not rise again. The virgin Israel. She lies neglected on her land. There is none to raise her up. The city which goes forth a thousand strong will have a hundred left. And the one which goes forth a hundred strong will have ten left to the house of Israel. Seek me that you may live. But do not resort to Bethel, and do not come to Gilgal, nor cross over to Beersheba, for Gilgal will certainly go into captivity, and Bethel will come to trouble. Seek the Lord that you may live, for he will break forth like a fire, O house of Joseph, and it will consume with none to quench. It is for Bethel. For those who turn justice into wormwood and cast righteousness down to the earth, he who made the Pleiades in Orion and changes deep darkness into morning, who also darkens the day into night, who calls for the waters of the sea and he pours them out on the surface of the earth. The Lord is his name. It is he who flashes forth with destruction among the strong so that destruction comes upon the fortress. They hate him who reproves in the gate. They abhor him who speaks with integrity. 
Therefore, because you impose heavy rent on the poor and exact a tribute of grain from them, though you have built houses of well-hewn stone, yet you will not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, yet you will not drink their vine. For I know your transgressions are many and your sins are great. You who distress the righteous and accept bribes and turn aside the poor in the gate. Therefore, at such a time, the prudent person keeps silent, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And thus may the Lord God of hosts be with you, just as you have said. Hate evil, love good, and establish justice in the gate. Perhaps the Lord, the God of hosts, may be gracious to you, the remnant of Joseph. There is a welling in the plazas, and in all the streets they say, Alas, alas! They also call the farmer to mourning, and the professional mourners to lamentations. And in all the vineyards there is wailing, because I will pass through the midst of you, says the Lord. The Lord has heard the last of the songs and worship of the northern kingdom. And even as they left their land behind, some could not help but carry their shrines and their idols with them. Sukkoth was the shrine of Saturn, also known as the god Molech, the god they worshipped instead of the Lord. Kilian was the image of Saturn or Moloch, which the Israelites worshipped. Now they are in exile beyond Damascus in the land of Assyria. After capturing King Hoshea of the northern kingdom and the city of Samaria, Shalmaneser returns back to Assyria where he dies in 722 B.C. And Sargon II becomes the king and he finishes the job of exiling all of the northern kingdom by 720 B.C. Sargon also sends men from the areas of Babylon, Kutha, Ava, Hamath, and Sepharim, and he settles them in the northern kingdom around the city of Samaria. They begin to intermarry with the poor Jews that were left behind and not taken into exile. And throughout the area they worship the gods of Assyria, Babylon, and the Medes. With the fall of the northern kingdom, nothing is heard of Hosea the prophet again, but his prophecies will continue to be fulfilled for hundreds of years in the future. Just after the fall of the northern kingdom, the capture of Samaria, and the imprisonment of the last king of the northern kingdom by the name of Hoshea, Isaiah stands in the streets and he says, Israel is obstinate, and the Lord told her that long ago. She could not say her idols told her because she did not know. Listen I am the first and I am the last, the Lord says. If you had listened and obeyed, your well-being would have never come to an end. Isaiah goes on to say, Where is the certificate of divorce by which the Lord has sent Israel's mother away? Why did no one answer, he asked. Israel was sold for her transgressions. But the Lord God helps those who rely on Him, the true God. With the northern kingdom captured literally just a few miles from Jerusalem and the southern kingdom, Micah prophesies hope for the southern kingdom by saying, When the Assyrians invade our land, when he tramples on our citadels, then we will raise against him seven shepherds and eight leaders of men. They will shepherd or control the Assyrians as they try to invade and destroy us. And He, the Lord God, will deliver us from the Assyrians when they attack our land and when they try to trample our territories. Who are the seven shepherds and the eight leaders that will successfully keep Assyria from capturing the southern kingdom? History tells us that answer. As for the shepherds, we already know about Isaiah and Micah, but Jeremiah, Obadiah, Nahum, Habakkuk, and Zephaniah will join them. As for the leaders of kings, we already know about King Hosea, but he will be followed by Manasseh, Ammon, Josiah, Jehoash, Jehoiakim, Jehoiachin, and the last king of the southern kingdom, King Zedekiah. 
Micah does not promise that the northern kingdom will return to the land. In fact, none of the prophets do. But Micah does promise that the exiles of the northern kingdom will be scattered out through every nation of the world. And there they will prosper at times, and at other times they will be trampled down. But in the end, all of her adversaries and all of her enemies will be cut off, including those Israelites that are sorcerers and idolaters. <laughs>